When I first started getting into combining plants together, I kind of just did it by accident, you know. I would make a swimming like pool area for the children one year. Then the next summer, I'd move that swimming pool, and that would be the garden. So I wouldn't have to take any grass out. Um, so the swimming pool would be in a new area every year. I'd get a new garden every year. But they're only little gardens. And I put them all around the yard, right? So eventually, I ended up gardens all over my yard. And I had a shady garden and a sunny garden and a midway garden and, you know, different areas to try different vegetables in different areas in my yard. And I'd go to the store and, you know, you'd only want a couple of tomatoes, right? And, but you want a couple of different kinds. So I'd share with people in the area and you get, you know, a bunch of different plants, right? So in a little garden, you have to put them somewhere. So I started experimenting with uh, combining vegetables, flowers, other vegetables together. Some work, some don't. And it will work and not work in different areas. You have to really experiment with it to really find out what will work and not work in that area in your yard. Um, I moved it all over my yard and get different results all over my yard. So it's all in experimenting and why do you have to combine your vegetables? Right here I have some empty spots. My carrots didn't germinate that well and I don't want to pull all my carrots out but I want to fill up the holes. So earlier I put a couple of sunflowers in and an asterisk and they seem to be doing pretty good. But I have a couple more beans. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put a bean in there, a bean in there, and maybe one in here, and one here, and one there, and maybe a one or two over in here. I even have milkweed and a squash and buckwheat growing around. And I have weeds from the lawn creeping in, which is usually all goat food, except for that. And some other wart might be a little strong for a pregnant. No, if she's pregnant. Anyway, I'm gonna plant this up and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. We'll see. There. Now it's much fuller. And they will end up blending into each other and kind of protecting each other because the ground is showing they want to fill that in and i can put some mulch in here now around the carrots and that and it'll help pick it up there's not much organic material in there it's mostly sand um now the peas don't mind that at all i have one right here now these are um supposed to be a dry pea but you can eat them raw. Let me try this one. It's big enough. There's some more in there. But I thought it would be nice to have to grow some dried peas. I think these purple ones can be a dried pea too. Look, we got some tomatoes. Yay. Okay. See, that's motherwort and carrots. And um, they keep kind of fighting for that area. And then I have some peas. And then there's a millet or milo or whatever. The quail will love that. So I'm letting that weed come up. Why not? The birds love some of them. So it's not only my food that's growing in here. It's also food for the animals. That milkweed, we can eat parts of it. Um... As long as it's the right milkweed. Yummy. Yummy. You're sweet enough.
I think that one's the main, main Mongolian tendril. Magnolia tendril, purple pea. Since it's got tendrils like this stuff does when it first popped up. I was good. I think I'm going to pick some more of them. I better stop eating them. I'm going to waste them in. But I might have some with supper. I think I'm going to see how big these carrots are. Try to show. Right out here. I don't think they're that big. But... Let's see. Well, not bad. That's one of my colorful ones. So they are growing okay. But it looks like they're getting choked out. But that stuff helps protect it from drying out. Well, it got really hot. Yum. I love eating straight out of the garden. And this tea. Well, the goats would eat it too. The mummy rabbits like those flowers usually. Off the squash. See, I still got another garden area here that we can do. <laughs> But we planted all that with potatoes. And then put mulch over top of it. And we're going to keep putting more mulch. There's a big carrot flower. Then I'll drop its seeds this year. And I'll have carrots all on their own over here next year. And I don't have to do anything. There's a big lettuce. That's going to be putting... That's a wild lettuce too. So it's going to be putting those seeds out everywhere. There's wild chicory doing the same thing. Well, not wild. I planted that one. That corn's getting nice and tall. And these gardens here, I'm going to put the coffee on them. They're, they're brightening. Like the green's coming through now. And they look a little stronger than what they did. And there's a little bit of... Yeah, there's a little bit of corn. Yeah, the potatoes are coming up from last year. Because we didn't take them all up. So we should, we might even have our 50 pounds of potatoes without actually planting that much. We planted, uh, I don't know how many pounds. Oh, my dill's coming up nice in here. Mm -hmm. But see, there's another garden that's all mixed here. And... I can't remember what corn is what anymore, but everything's planted. That's a new herb, and there's other lettuces and stuff, and meats, and tomatoes, and honey spinach. There's our giant pumpkin. I think it flowered today, or yesterday, but it's, I don't know if it's going to take. But there's a lot more coming. So, I'm happy with that. It's covering up the strawberries. I don't think there's much back here. There's some tomatoes. And they'll pop through if they want. I think there's just strawberries that didn't do too much. So they're okay to be covered up by the big pumpkin now. I think some of the arms are going to break them off. Because it can come this way. There's nothing here. There's some potatoes you left in the ground last year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you dig them, and then there's a little teeny tiny potatoes, we, we just put them back. And they sprout again for on their own next year. You don't have to plant as many. Oh, yeah, we do have goldenrod now, which is cool. Everything's coming along nice. I'm surprised, but I have a slow start on everything. There's more dill over here. I keep pinching it back, and then you'll get more flowers. So you come out here when you need dill, and you take the flower off. Use the flower, and then it'll keep mushing out with leaves. And then you can take all the leaves for your uh, canning. But a lot of that, like... 
that was just barely hanging on, and now it's come with all that rain that we had. Everything's looking alive now. There's more beets and stuff coming up in there. Oh, they're looking a little bit more perky. I don't know if you see them in there. And it's mixed with a bunch of stuff in there and it's whirling well. So, and then pull more sun chokes out in there and then we can plant more peas probably at the back. This it gets a little bit of shade in here. A little sunshade. So, and then everything needs to be fertilized. I'm almost done planting. <laughs> almost. I just have some more peas. And those are trees. I don't know what kind of tree they are. But they're a weed tree, I think. Oh, yeah, and the mallow relative. I'm not putting the basil in the ground. But the toothache plant will go in the greenhouse, probably. And all the peas will go back there and in other areas. And then I'm done. There's peppers. Greenhouse. Already coming on that one. That's a John, Johnny... Long Jimmy Narnero hammer. Whatever that is. Oh, everything's coming along nice. All that's like a celery leafy thing.